Rule 13. Anything you say can and will be turned into something else. Hi, welcome or welcome back. I'm Evie and I do mini video essays analyzing society. And I want to talk about internet bots and how they exploit our human nature. Misinformation is not the worst thing that happened to us. It's terrible enough when some news channels unironically look at tweets and consider them valid human opinions. Chances are those people are not even real, so no, I don't think Furry Destroyer 2108 should be taken seriously. Estimates on the terrible state of Twitter say it is anything from 20 to 60% just bots. And we know this, so why did we forget? Even a small number of bots are sufficient to sway public opinion and not just in regards to what counts as real news. We have no idea how bad it is online, how many people are actually bots, but regardless, you may as well be classified as a bot if you still engage on Twitter. The existence of bots is very unfortunate for us because we don't know how to socialize differently with them and with humans. Even when people are reminded that, hey, there are bots among us, they are still only able to correctly identify if they are interacting with a bot. In 42% of cases. So not at all. This was a study done on the Mastodon platform. Yes, I also forgot that it exists. And hilariously enough, it also shows that we forgot one of the basic rules of the internet. Rule 30. There are no girls on the internet. They created personas for the interactions they tested. And the type of the persona was ultimately what determined whether people were able to tell whether this is a bot or not. Some personas just stood out more strongly. And independent women <laughs> were the least likely to be identified as bots. <laughs> But if everything else was healthy in online communication, misinformation would just end up being, I think this is true. No, sorry, it isn't. Okay. And that would be it. But bots fundamentally changed the patterns of language communication cycles. So that now, even if the bots cease to exist from now on, the syntax and pragmatics on the internet is already ruined. We're all bots now. Yet, I still think the polarization and the lack of nuance and context was not inherently going to happen to internet communication. Nor is it part of our human nature. It's not like we had a frame of reference when the internet was introduced to us on a large scale. This was not inevitable. Bots amplify emotional messages, prioritize speed and lack of nuance and neutrality. And that makes people copy those patterns. And now some people refuse to accept that there are different contexts to communication. One group can communicate in a way that would be totally innocuous to them and it can come across as something inherently offensive to another group. The earliest internet bot experiments took place in the 90s. People noticed very early on that the existence of bots among real world humans was their big vulnerability. We treat computers as social beings even when we know we shouldn't. One of the earliest experiments found that we apply social norms to computers, we are mostly kind toward them, and we even assume their gender. The human tendency to apply social norms to computers was called incurable back then by the researchers. Yeah, people knew even back then that this would have gigantic implications. And now when you create bots using large language models, they can create arguments, draw on contextual knowledge, and even perform basic reasoning tasks. At this point we would barely be able to tell the difference between some people and bots so I get that the lines are blurred and detection is hard. It's like trash cans in parks, either the dumbest humans will not be able to open them or they will be accessible to bears as well. And that has huge implications for the world and community organizing. The Catalan independence movement was heavily targeted by bot activity. About one in three entities in this Twitter sub-environment was a bot. The bots flocked around the most influential humans and they generated negative content towards these leaders of the movement and created division in, well, many ways, but one one very interesting observation was that real people tended to engage with each other neutrally, whereas bots amplified emotional outbursts towards others. If a human unknowingly interacts with a bot that they perceive as having a higher status, they copy their language patterns and that in turn enhances the scale of infection by the bot's quote-unquote emotions. And if you interact with someone you perceive as your equal, you still get infected by their perceived negative emotional states, but not quite as much because it's not amplified by you repeating their words. The word repetition doesn't only codify the substance into your brain. It's hard to pinpoint and be aware of it fully, but we also internalize the structures of the language we come into contact with, on every level, and human-AI interactions indeed deform natural language use. In situations without AI, the lack of clarity and straightforwardness we exhibit in natural communication is actually pretty good in some ways because we have a theory of mind, meaning we are aware that other people exist, which, however inaccurate or inadequate, at least somewhat helps us empathize or helps us realize that we should empathize. Bots don't have this, and by the virtue of mimicry, we just stop doing it as well. So we stop engaging in nuance because others aren't doing it. So why should I? Natural language adaptation turned dystopian, thanks to bots. Bots don't have this capability to consider context and intent, which overall is called pragmatics. Now imagine, if you will, that bots, having no pragmatic competence, would constantly beat it into the heads of the more vulnerable people that actually context doesn't matter and a word, I don't know, genes, actually means that this person believes in eugenics and they're a Nazi or something. Just 
an example. <laughs> it's like the world was now ruled by a bunch of English literature majors. Maybe, sometimes, the fact that the curtains were blue means just that, that the curtains were f***ing blue. The core problem is that all that suffices for us is that someone uses human language and they are automatically treated as a moral subject. Why did we ever take everyone online seriously? Because modernity, we are supposed to treat everyone as if they were the same kind of rational being. Which realistically, we all know that's not true. Even if bots were not a factor, some people are more rational than others. Just because someone has a thought, does not mean it is inherently valid. In the medieval times, you had to deserve to be taken seriously by the community, by the virtue you actively demonstrated. And in a world with bots, it makes even more sense that people online should not be given the benefit of the doubt that they actually used reason. But you don't understand, some real-world people would not make the cut. I know, long overdue. It's funny to me how this kind of mirrors how women naturally socialize. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. Men, again, generally, want others to prove themselves before granting trust, but women, generally, take words at face value and only then reassess based on actions, which is objectively a terrible approach. Especially in a world where there is at least one bot in every couple interactions online. Also, even though it is getting better, we assume that people are inherently competent by virtue of their identity. So on top of the default, this is a rational being, if it signals that it belongs to the appropriate subset of people who wouldn't take it seriously. The woman, as an experienced rabbit breeder, nobody asked for your bio, you're not writing a recipe on your blog, this can be so easily misused by bots. Honestly, anytime I see something like as a woman, I think, yep, that's a bot. Fun fact, this is one of the aspects of a society that no longer reads. It's true, literate cultures focus on substance over authority, but oral cultures, which are technically the simpler ones, tend to focus on the authority of the interlocutor when determining if someone is worth listening to. What do we do? Maybe this is not the first time it happened. Maybe there are instructions on how to interact with something that exists in a different place on the consciousness spectrum. Fairies. Now tell me this cannot be used as guidance when interacting with a bot or whoever was corrupted by an internet narrative or as instructions on what to do when you happen to push somebody's ideological buttons. If you find yourself traveling to their realm, you should never accept any food or drink they offer. This is a way of trapping you in their world. If you start taking interest in the fae, they will notice this and in some instances test you. They do this by seeing just how much you truly care about the environment and nature, which is their dominion. Be aware that fairies are not wild creatures or individualistic egos. They are all subject of higher fairy powers. So if you interact with one fairy, however wild it may appear, you are interacting with the fairy order it is ruled by. Respectful diplomacy is thus required. That's it, that's the end of the video. It looks like I'm able to post every 48 hours at least, so next video in a bit. My goal is daily posting eventually, but we'll see. In the meantime, be kind to yourselves, do one good thing in the real world to counter the influence of bots, and subscribe if you thought this video was interesting.